let me do this. Here we are. So uh, in these 30 minutes, I will try to present the LILA knowledge base of interlinked linguistic resources for Latin. So we will talk about linguistic resources and interlinking them. And uh, I would like to move to the next slide. Here it is. Uh, so this is the overview of my talk. I will provide you, first of all, with a brief introduction about the fundamentals of LILA. And then we will enter in, into LILA, looking at uh, the resources that are currently linked to the knowledge base. So let's start from the introduction. Um, why did we start to, to build LILA? Because of a research question reflecting the state of affairs. Because it's, it's a matter of fact that across the decades we have built and collected for Latin, for Neo-Latin and for many other languages, a lot of textual resources like corpora, lexical resources like lexica and dictionaries, and natural language processing tools like a part of speech tagger. The problem is that these resources and tools are currently scattered and unconnected. So they are distributed all over the web. They follow different data formats, annotation criteria, uh, query languages, taxets, and it's difficult to make them interact. So this is the reason why we started to build the LILA knowledge base, applying to Latin the principles of the so-called linked data paradigm, which is a paradigm that is used in the semantic web world. So LILA is an ERC consolidator grant, and the knowledge base is a collection of multifarious interoperable, and this is a keyword, linguistic resources described with the same vocabulary for knowledge description, which means that they use common data categories and ontologies. And in a while, I will show you one of these ontologies and how it works. So our idea is that interlinking resources is a form of interaction, is a way to make them interact. And here, the prefix inter is meaningful and makes a knowledge base like LILA, whose aim is the interoperability between distributed resources, different from an infrastructure like Clarin, whose prefix is infra, which is more a repository and a hub place where you store resources, where you can find resources that are indeed not interoperable because interoperability is a key word. The link data principles. In order to make your resources fair, most likely you know about this acronym, which means findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So we apply the link data principles to Latin linguistic resources to make our beautiful resources uh, interoperable and fair. What are the principles? They're very simple, and I will be very brief here. First of all, use URIs, which are uniform resource identifiers. Uniform resource identifiers are, in some way, the genetic code that identifies uniquely something. And the things that are in our world are entries in a lexicon, tokens in a corpus. So each element in the knowledge base is assigned a unique ID. Then, use, use, then you, you have to use HTTP URIs in order to allow people and machines to look up things. So you go in the internet. Then you use web standards to represent and query the data and the metadata such as RDF and Sparkle. I will not enter the details here, but consider one aspect of RDF. RDF is the data model that stands behind here, the semantic web and the linked data principle. And one of the tenets of RDF is that everything deals with, everything is represented through triples. Triples are made of a subject, an object, and a kind of predicate that connects them. So for instance, in, in our case, I am a subject, Marco Passerotti, and this conference is the object. And uh, uh, there is a, 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 a predicate that connects Marco Passerotti and this conference as uh, that can be something like, uh, is a speaker of. So Marco Passerotti, first, is a speaker of, second, 
This conference, third, everything deals with triples. And I will show you even graphically a lot of these triples. And then, of course, include links to other URIs. So connect one URI to another URI through some property, some predicate triples. Okay. This is the basic architecture of the Lila knowledge base, which is highly lexically based. Because we start from a very simple assumption that everything deals with words. Uh, lexical resources are made of lexical entries. So they describe the properties of words. Textual resources like digital libraries and tree banks are made of occurrences of words in text that are called tokens. It is not true that tokens always correspond to words, but let's, let, let's say like this. So textual resources are made of occurrences of words in text. And natural languages processing tools process words and produce outputs. Then you have a double arrow here because the output of some NLP tools are tokens, for instance, a tokenizer produce tokens that then become the input of other NLP tools, like for instance, a part of speech tucker. So we have these distributed lexical resources, textual resources and NLP tools, which are made of these components and we link all of them and make them interact, make them speak the same language by connecting them to a big collection of Latin lemmas. So you can query all the tokens in distributed textual resources that are lemmatized under the same lemma. And these lemma have some lexical properties that are described by the lexical entries of other distributed lexical resources. The good thing here is that throughout the years, we have built our community has built a lot of these resources. What we have to do in Lila, in Lila is nothing but make them interact. Because Lila is a mere reflection of your work, reflects the annotation granularity of the resources it connects. So we do not make any data enrichment or forth and analysis, but we can help you to enrich your metadata, at least in order to meet the requirements of Lila to connect the resources in the knowledge base. Because as it, may, as it is clear, to enter the Lila knowledge base, a resource must be at least lemmatized. So at the end of this talk, I will show you uh, a way, uh, a tool to lemmatize your raw text. Then it is good that, it, that your resource is also part of speech tagged, ideally using the universal dependencies tag set, which is a, a widespread part of speech tag set. And many of your resources are already lemmatized in part of speech tag. The best will be that the resource is also online. Uh, which means that each token, if you have a corpus, is assigned a URI and a spe specifically an HTTP URI. If you are not in this condition, we can help you to get there. So now let's move to Lila now and let's move to show you the, li the Lila Lemma Bank because Lila makes use of lemmas as the connecting nodes of all the resources linked to the knowledge base. So we spent the first two years of the ERC project building the so-called Lemma Bank, which is a big collection of Latin lemmas or better Latin citation forms that are used by resources to refer to lexical entries. So, I promised you that I had to, to uh, I would have shown you a, um, an ontology. So, so this is the uh, Lila Ontolex Lemon model, which is a, a de facto standard for publishing lexical data as linguistic linked open data. So here, the, the first fundamental class is the lexical entry. A lexical entry can be a word, a multi-word expression, or an affix. Now we focus on word. A lexical entry, you see a triple here, is connected to lexical for, to its lexical forms by some property, which is, for instance, lexical form. 
So the a lexical form is a lexical form of a lexical entry. So for instance, for the lexical entry amo or condicio, you have different forms like condicionem, condicionibus, uh, conditionem, conditionibus. So here you have the different inflected forms for a lexical entry. And the different inflected forms can have different written representations, conditionem versus conditionem. And one of the lexical forms, and this is the key point here, one of the lexical form is the canonical form, which is the form that is canonically used to refer to a lexical entry, nothing but the lemma. So what we built is a big collection of canonical forms according to the Ontolex Lemon model. Then in the bottom part here, you see the semantic part. A lexical entry can have one or more lexical senses. And a lexical sense is the lexical lexicalization of a lexical concept, which is evoked by a lexical entry. This, this term evoke is taken from uh, the, the terminology of frame semantics. So keep in mind this, because I will get back on this when uh, we will see some lexical resources. Now let's start from the Lemma Bank, which is a collection of canonical forms, a collection of lemmas. The Lemma Bank is built upon the, uh, the lexical basis of the morphological analyzer for Latin, Lemlat, which was recently extended. So now we will go live and I hope that everything will go well and uh, we will see a specific lemma, the lemma ad mirror. And here you see is uh, genetic code. So it's URI which identifies uniquely ad mirror in the world, in the world at least of Lila. And from ad mirror we will see a number of lexical resources that are currently already linked to the Lila knowledge base, a derivational lexicon, a polarity lexicon, an etymological dictionary, a valence lexicon, and a manually checked subset of the Latin wordnet. So let's click here. So here we go. You will see that, first of all, you see the triples. So this is the subject, which identifies ad mirror, and then you have the properties, which are the predicates, and then you have the object. So for instance, this subject has base, this object, which is the base of mirus, or, or this subject as part of speech verb, it is a verb. Okay, now let's move to a graphical representation, which is easier. So this is your object, ad mirror, a mirror. You immediately see that there are two different written representations here. So the citation form, which is this, can be represented in two written representations, ad mirror or ad a mirror. Now to this ad mirror, a mirror are connected, are linked all the occurrences of the lemma ad mirror in all the lemma, in all the textual resources, so all the corpora that are linked to Lila. And to this lemma, are connected all the lexical entries of Admiror in all the lexical resources linked to Lila. So let's start, for instance, from here. So, remind, here we are in the Lemma Bank, and this is a canonical form according to Ontolex Lemon. Here, this is a lexical entry, and especially this is a lexical entry of the word formation Latin lexical resource, which is a derivational lexicon for Latin. A derivational, a, morph a derivational morphology lexicon connects uh, words by word formation rules. So for instance, ad mirror is connected. Oh, this is the name of the resource. So this will take some seconds, just a moment. Uh, I explain you here this. You see that the lexical entry of WFL, the word formation Latin is connected to its canonical form in the lemma bank through this property that is canonical form. So the canonical form of this lexical entry in the lemma bank is ad mirror, a mirror. Sorry for taking a while, but I clicked the wrong, the wrong node. 
just a moment. Here we are. So this says that ad mirror is an entry of this lexicon. And here you have the description of the lexicon. It's a word formation based lexicon for classical and late Latin. And around this node are all the entries for WFL. Okay, admirer is connected, for instance, to admirabilis. And you see that there is a relation between admirer and admirabilis. And admirer is the source of this relation, and admirabilis is the target of this relation. This relation has a specific word formation rule. And this word formation rule involves a specific suffix, which is bill. And around bill, you find all the words in the lemma bank that are formed with the suffix bill. For instance, corruptibilis and uh, predicabilis. So passing through these triples, because these are triples, this is a subject, this is an object, and this is a relation, you can run queries like, in all the corpora connected to Lila, give me all the occurrences of words that are formed by a word formation rule of the type verb to adjective, so the verbal adjectives that are formed with a specific suffix bill. What we are doing now, we are making all the corpora connected to Lila and the specific lexical resource, the word formation Latin dictionary, interact because the information is taken from different and distributed resources. Now let's focus again on admirer and, and admirer. And let's see another lexical resource. Now you know about this. So canonical form is the property that connects a lexical entry in a lexical resource with the canonical form in the lemma bank. Okay, now, yesterday we have seen the Latin wordnet. What we have done here is to build, to uh, uh, check a manually, manually a subset of the Latin wordnet, cleaning the synsets assigned to the lemmas, because we have a valency lexicon. So, the, the lexical entry admirer evokes a specific valency frame. A valency frame is nothing but a collection of the obligatory complementations of a word. So for instance, this valency frame is made of two semantic roles, two obligatory complementations that are called arguments, an actor and the patient. But what is important is that in the Pragian theory, each valency frame is connected to a specific sense of the lexical entry. Now, we need these senses. The best way to represent sentence that we found was the word synthesis. So what we did was to join two resources, the valency lexicon and the wordnet. And we map each valency frame to its wordnet synset. So this is done uh, through this conceptualization. In this way, we apply a previously available ontology used to represent predicate, predicate uh, argument structures that, it's, that is called Premon. And in this way, you have a conceptualization of this valency frame, which is connected to a mapping, and this mapping is connected to the conceptualization of the word net synset. It seems to be difficult, but it's not. It's a way to map this sense represented by this synset, which means uh, regard highly, think much of, for admirer, to this valency frame for admirer. Again, imagine you have a lot of corpora connected to Lila, and you can query uh, run a query like, oh, give me all the words formed with a specific prefix, uh, give me all the occurrences in all the corpora connected to Lila, of words formed with a, a, a specific prefix, uh, and that have valency frames that are made of an actor, a patient, and an addressee. You are jointly making use of corpora, distributed corpora, 
a valency lexicon and a, and a, a derivational lexicon. Let's get back again to the lemma bank. So this is an entry for the lemma bank. And each entry of the lemma bank is, if it has a base, well, as a base, is connected to its base. So the base of mirrors here is connected to all the words in the lemma bank that make use of the same base, like mirifico, premirus, miraculosus, and so on. Again, you have a lot of corpora connected to Lila, and you can run a query like, give me all the occurrences of all the words that share the same base. And among these, there is a specific lemma that I want to show you, which is this one, which is mirus. And let's focus on mirus because from Mirus, we can see two further lexical resources that are connected to uh, Lila. The first one is the etymological dictionary of Latin language by uh, Michael Devan. And this is a lexical entry of that uh, uh, etymological dictionary. And in the dictionary, there is an etymology for Mirus. This is represented through a model that is called etilemon. And the etymology of Mirus in, in uh, uh, the dictionary by Devan has two etima. This one, which is the Proto-Indo-European root for this lemma, and this one, which is the Proto-Italic root. So if you open the dictionary, imagine that here you open the dictionary, you find two etymologies. This one is the Proto-Indo-European, and this one is the Proto-Italic. There is something more. The Proto-Indo-European language, the Proto-Indo-European root is the source of its target, which is the Proto-Italic root, which on its side, it's the source of the target Latin. So from Proto-Indo-European root, you move to, a, to an etymology link to a target, which is the Proto-Italic root, and which is the source of, a of an etymology link that links to Latin. In my dream, to this Proto-Indo-European root should be attached all the words and all the occurrences in all the corpora of all the languages that make use of this root in their lexicon, in the European languages. So let's get back to Mirus. And let's see another resource that is called Latin Affectus that was built in our research center by Rechele Sprugnol. And Latin Affectus is a polarity lexicon that assigns to a prior sense of each lemma a degree of polarity. So for instance, positive. This is using sentiment analysis, for instance. And around this node are connected all the lemmas in the Latin affectus resource that have the same polarity positive. Now let's get back to the presentation and let's move to textual resources because there are these two main categories of resources, lexical resources and textual resources. As you may know, as you maybe know, uh, in Milan, we have been building since uh, 2006, the Index Domesticus Tree Bank, which is now available in two schemes, the original scheme and the universal dependency scheme. So for those of you who don't know what a tree bank is, a tree bank is a syntactically annotated corpus. And syntax is here represented through dependency trees. So a universal dependency is a scheme that represents this. Now let's focus on this node. So this is a tree for a sentence in the Index Domesticus tree bank. And this sentence says that Medicina excluded agritudinem. And Medicina is the nominal subject of excluded. How is this represented? Again, the token Medicina is assigned a specific URI. And this is the token Medicina in the Lila knowledge base. Again, let's see again our node. And uh, we can see that Medicina stands in a n sub relation with excluded. So excluded is the add of, of the dependent Medicina through the nominal subject relation. And this is how dependency relation is represented in Lila. 
What I want to show you here is this one, that each token, this is a token, this is an occurrence of a word in a corpus, is connected to the lemma bank. This is a canonical form in the lemma bank to the as lemma property. Excluded is connected to as lemma to excludo. And from excludo, you go to the base of cloudo. And from the base of cloudo, you move to clausibilis and to conclusura. And from conclusura, you move to the prefix con. And from the prefix con, you move to all the words that share the same prefix core, contessero, and contestibilis, conmestibilis, and so on. So, Lila basically is a big collection of triples. So far, we have around 13 million triples. And at the end of the project, we plan to have uh, more than some hundred, if not billion, triples. The text linker. Uh, if you have a wonderful raw text in Latin and uh, you don't have the motivation in part of speech tagging, we can help you with this tool that is called the text linker. The text linker helps you to lemmatize and part of speech tag your text and to link directly your text to the knowledge base. So let's see how it works. Uh, let's get here. Here it is. So this is the text linker. You have just to paste your text here. Of, of course, we will also make it possible to uh, upload a text. So I selected this text from uh, the Camena corpus and uh, in particular, to show you an example, I will copy paste a part of this text here. So, not this one, not this one, but this one. So I will just copy paste here a part of this text taken from the Camina Corpus. Here it is. So I process the text and this is the output. In the this pie chart, there is a resume of the results. So in this text, there are 116 words that are exactly matched with just one lemma in the lemma bank of Lila. There are eight words, eight tokens that are ambiguously matched because they can be matched with more than one lemma in the lemma bank. And there are three words that do not match. That lemma is not there. If you move on the words, you see that the result of the part of speech tagger, maybe in the discussion I can provide you with details about this part of speech tagger. For instance, here you see that the form quan is correctly assigned the lemma quam as the subordinating conjunction and not the relative pronoun. So let's click on one of these. The green ones are those that, does, that are unambiguously connected to one lemma in Lila. So this Ebris token is connected to Lemma Ebrius, and these are the data that come from the Lemma Bank. Ebrius is the Lemma, is uh, an adjective with this inflection type, this only written representation, and it has these two Proto-Indo-European and Proto-Italic roots that come from the etymological dictionary by Brill. And each of these words is assigned, especially specifically one lemma, Venuste, Venustus, and you see here all the properties of Venustus. In particular, you see that in the Latin affectus, resource of Venustus has the positive value. But there are some blue words, dicunt. This is the ambiguous match because there are two dico in the lemma bank, dico dicare of the first conjugation and dico dicere of the third conjugation. And of course, you can choose the right one, which is dico dicere of the third conjugation, this one. If I click on choose, you see that this token becomes green. And what about oblectazioni? It is red, it is not linked, because the, part, the tagger lemmatized oblectaccio. Mm, I don't like it. Let's see if, the, if there is oblectatio in oblect. Here it is. If there is oblectatio in the lemma bank, it is there. I click here and oblectatio, oblectazioni becomes green because it is linked. Then I click on linking. I report here some metadata about my linking and the output of this is a TTL file. So a turtle file, which is nothing but a serialization of RDF. 
So it is a file made of the triples that connect each of your tokens to one or more lemmas or one lemma if you have disambiguated all the ambiguous links in the Lira knowledge base. And then your text is li linked to Lira. So to sum up, this is, uh, these are the resources that are currently connected to Lila and the upcoming connections. Uh, you see that we are working on three banks, on three different corpora. Yesterday, Nevin mentioned that he's working on linking a text from Kroal, and I'm very glad of this. And in a while, we will link also the Lewis and Short Dictionary. And we, have, we are a bit uh, worried about the number of triples that we have because they are already 30 million. So uh, then I provided you with, uh, uh, with these slides and each of these uh, points in this slide are links to the uh, resource, the, lex the, the, textual, the textual resource or the lexical resource in the Lemma Bank. So you, you can just go here, click the links and hopefully enjoy Lila. And I thank you very much.